G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Uh, thanks for tuning in today. We're running through a topic today in Autodesk Revit, um, dealing with families. Um, I have a series of family tutorials I recommend you watch prior to this tutorial, especially if you're quite new to the concept in Revit as well. Um, so this, what we're looking at today is a content creation advanced technique, um, which I call room families. So what is a room family? Um, it's not a category in Revit. It's a term that I use um, to determine a collection of nested elements that are parametrically constrained and controlled to form a room. Um, so basically a control system. So why do we use them? Um, control and standardization. So they allow us to create common rooms that we can repeat throughout a project or multiple projects. Um, for example, an accessible toilet um, where things can be locked in a set position rather than having to place everything manually. So this is today's example that we're looking at, basically a set of meeting rooms that we want to use one family to control. So there's a few options we'll need to consider in how we build this. So we'll jump to a demonstration. So we're going to make a new generic model, just a default Autodesk template. So this is our origin. It's going to be at the top left corner of the room. So we're going to make this left instead of center. And we'll make this the back of the room. From here, we're going to create two additional reference plans and we'll just make them five meters and five meters for now to make it quite large. So basically we're going to load in a whole bunch of content that we're going to nest into this assembly family in principle. Just excuse that noise if you can hear it. That's one of my cats. Very hungry. Okay, so what we're going to do is assign some parameters to these. We'll just make that five meters as well. So this is essentially the width of our room and this is the depth of our room. So we'll add a new shared parameter. I've got a tutorial about shared parameters if you need to watch that one. And I'll make it instance based and then we'll add a depth to the room as well. <laughs> okay. And then we'll just um, maximize the extent of some of these reference plans to cover the room. And usually what I like to do with these families is create a, a border or an outline for the room, typically as a model line and invisible lines. This way you can see the outside of the room. A very hungry cat there. This way you can see the outline of the room in 3D as well and understand the <laughs> extent of the room. Sorry, my cat's very hungry there. It's making me laugh. Um, just fed him too. So we'll get a, a center line of the room. Mm. Sorry, I'll just... Ugh, this is the guy that's making all the noise. This guy is very hungry. Even though he's just ate, haven't you? All right. Back to it. A little cat distraction. So what we're going to do is set up a center line of the room as well with EQ relationships and I'll just go to 1 to 50 so you can see my dimensions a bit more accurately. There we go. So this is the center of our room in principles. So what we have at the moment is uh, basically a parametric box uh, in principles, the outline of our room. So now we need to actually put things in it. So we're going to load a few families in. So I'm going to go and load in a whole bunch of content that I've set up already for this tutorial. Um, it's a mixture of Autodesk content and also content that I've built myself. Um, so some of this will be available and some simpler versions of some of these families are available in the Autodesk library. For example, I'm using my own power and data and light switches here because I find them easier to use because they're, they're floor hosted rather than wall hosted. So I'll just load all this content in and we're going to start nesting it into this family in principle. So let's just start with the table and let's just say the table is always at the center of the room. So we'll just use a 12 by 2400, rotate it into place, and we use our align tool to constrain it to reference planes. And basically what will happen now is as our room changes size, that will reconstrain itself to the right position. And we want to set up some chairs after that. Let's just say we want six chairs at the table. So we'll just make a reference plane here and here. And we'll lock those based on the center. So this is already constrained on the center of the room. So these will relate to the center of the room when we offset them. And as they move, they'll, they'll move with that center. And then we'll just insert some chairs. We'll just tuck them under the table. 
And you'll notice I'm making these not a reference because I don't want to be able to dimension these at the project level because these only really relate to the chairs themselves. Um, so these are just holding them in the right spot. Because you've got to remember all these families are shared. So if I open up one of these families, you'll see that there's a tick box here called shared, which means it's actually going to source the family's version of that, uh, the project's version of that family, not this, not this level's version. So really all we're doing is giving them positions to be locked to based on which versions in the project. So if this chair was more up to date than the, the family's version, the project would actually reflect the more up to date chair. Okay. So I'm just going to mirror a set of those across and just constrain them. And you'll see what we get from there. And I might just load this in as an example after, so you can see what the family is in principle doing. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a save as at this point. Save as family. So if I load this into my project and just jump to a floor plan and go to place a family, you'll now see that that family in position. So this is basically the side of the room with the door on it. So I'm going to rotate this 180. But what we can do now is basically just change the size of our room. And you'll see that that dynamically changes the set out of the table as that also changes. So that's quite powerful. Okay, very naughty cut there. Very noisy. Um, okay, so we've got three, three, <laughs> three meeting rooms there. Sorry, I've got a friend coming again. Say hi again. Hopefully, it will behave for the rest of the series. Okay, so these are all in place now. So if I update this family and make a change to it, let's say we just hide a meeting room chair and we reload that back into our project and we override its values. You'll see that all three of these will pick up that change. So now you can see that level of control that's occurring. So we're going to add a lot more stuff to this family now. Um, the next thing we're going to add is a projector. And I just want to show you how you can more intelligently control certain elements that are slightly more parametric in nature. So at the moment, you'll see that this projector has a few instance parameters related to it. One of them is the, the ceiling height uh, or the mounting height of the projector screen. So we actually want to hook that up to an instance based parameter. And we'll call this ceiling height. And that's so at the, the family level, uh, at the project level, when we select the family, you have the ability to still change the ceiling height and then push it down to its nested components. But also just, we'll make the screen uh, 2200, and then we'll just set a parameter to that as well. Project the screen. And we'll make that instance based as well. Okay. And then we're just gonna create a reference plan that's offset so that we can constrain that reference plan that, that, that projector to a reference plane as well. Okay. 50. Cause this family is typically centered on its, on its, um, center point for its origin. So it's better to try and constrain things to their center point where possible. There you go. So that would be the, the projector for the room as well. And, but now we actually need the projector itself. So we have a projector family in here, a ceiling mounted projector with a throw distance. So the way this family works is it has a parametric throw distance, has a throw width and a throw depth. So obviously this can be all changed. We know our throw width. We know that we need to throw to the width of our screen, but we don't know our throw depth. So what we're gonna do is constrain this projector to the center of the room centered upon its throw point. So we need a reference plane offset by 120 so that we can constrain to the center of the projector. And it doesn't really matter too much where you put your dimensions, as long as they relate, obviously, to something. So if someone edited your family, they'd understand the intent of how that works. Okay, so that's our projector. So at the moment, we need a formula to determine the throw depth. So it's basically going to be, it's going to be half the room depth, take 50, take whatever this is, take. So it's going to be take 262.5. So we're going to create a parameter here for the throw depth. And that's gonna be a formula that we're gonna to use to drive it. 
So if I go to my type properties and we'll say that this is the room depth on two, take 262.5. And that way the throw depth knows how to get to the screen. So if I went and loaded this back into my project again now, you'll see that it'll pick up a projector screen and a projector, but you'll see that as the room changes size, the throw depth knows how to adjust to that room as well. So you can use formulas to connect instance-based relationships between certain elements. So that's quite powerful as well. And we'll just add a few more things. So let's say we want the option to have a TV or a projector. So we're gonna create a, a bracket at 1500 and a TV at 1500. Great, I think they're both already at 1500 mounting height. Great, these ones are ones that I've made custom because um, they've got a few bit more intelligence in them. So I'm going to create a visibility parameter to my projector and call this projector on and make that a visibility parameter. This way the user can elect whether they want their meeting room to have a projector or a TV. Likewise, we're just going to, I might just create some power and data outlets as well. So I'll create a double power outlet at 1350. I'll just change my detail level so I can see my symbols. Again, these, this, this is another custom family I've built, um, just so it has all the symbology that it would need. 1350, there we go. And we're gonna have offsets for both, both of those outlets as well. We're just gonna offset by 75. <laughs> and 75. Cat's having a lot of fun in the background. And for, for all those animal lovers out there, don't worry, he, um, he does this all the time. So we'll set that by another 10. And that's basically our mounting point for our TV. You can see I'm being a little bit messy with how I'm putting my dimensions around. Usually I'd be a little bit more careful, but um, obviously that takes more time. So I'm just saving a bit of, bit of time. Okay, and we'll just host our TV here. And there we go. And last of all, we'll just host our outlets. And we'll just constrain these. Okay. And we'll just take these elements. And we're going to assign a visibility parameter to these as well now. So not the projector, the TV. There we go. And we'll just call this TV on. So we're not turning on the TV literally, but we're turning on the elements. Sorry, bad joke. All right. So now what we can do is load this back in the project again. And by default, the TV and the projector will be on all the time. You could set up a formula to say, if projector is on, TV must be off, um, or you can just mass control your elements. So let's say that this is the only one with the projector. These other two have TVs. All you gotta do is tick those on and off, and you'll see that that parametrically controls that setting, but you can very quickly just toggle it back to a projector again. So this becomes a very helpful planning tool as well for people that don't want to have to build a meeting room from scratch every time. And you can also put fixed elements in the room as well, things that just are always at a set distance from a corner, for example. So let's just say we want to put in a filing cabinet. I'll just put this in and all you need is just a, a reference plane in one direction and a reference plane in a, another direction. So we'll just make that 100 mil from the corner. And you can just dimension like that and we could lock that into the corner and we'll load that back in and you'll get a filing cabinet in the corner of every room as a result and you could put visibility parameters on those as well in case every room didn't need a filing cabinet and the last thing we'll add um, we could add other like little things like there's a lot of things I could add I could add table contents as well so I can add a, like a polycom phone and just offset it by the table height. I could, I could lock that to here. Sorry, lock that to here. And to here, I could bring in a laptop. I won't do too many of these because they're not necessarily going to teach you a lot. They're really just me showing you a few random elements you can use to, um, to jazz up your room. Cool. And then we can put in a clock on the wall as well, so you can put in objects with mounting heights as well. Um, you just need to make sure your mounting height is correct at the family level. 
uh, that way that when you load it in the project, it works um, because you won't be able to change instance parameters in the assembly at the project level. So if we load that in now, as you can guess, you end up with those fixtures on each particular instance of these families as a result. Uh, looks like our, our laptop was on the floor at the moment. So all we need to do is take that offset it by the table height. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put a light switch at the door. So our door is going to be around this general area. Let's say we don't always know exactly where the door is going to be. So we want to set up an instance based control to position this element. So we're going to create one light switch here and one light switch here. And basically this is option one, this is option two, and it's always going to be a distance from the corner. So we'll set up two reference planes and you could set up two parameters. But what we're going to do is only set up one parameter because it's always going to need a light switch and it's it's going to be on one side or it's going to be on the other. And we'll just say, we'll just call that switch offset. And we'll align that switch to the wall. We'll align this switch to the wall. Okay. So this is basically going to be switch option one. Um, we're just going to call this one one or two because we're going to set up two options and one of them is going to be controlled by the other. So we'll call this one switch option two. And we'll just make this a other type parameter so that it's out of the way. And this is basically just going to be not that. So when one is on, the other is not. So there's basically always a light switch on and you only need one parameter to control where it's positioned. So basically from here, we could take that and we'll just do a quick purge before we load in this family, just so it's free of all the other families that we didn't use because this contains families and can load them between projects if you're not careful. So keep that in mind. So we'll just load that into our project and you'll see we've got a couple of different door configurations here. Let's um let's move this door to this, this side actually so you've got full visibility and we'll just need to mirror this because it's currently the wrong way around. And then we'll just mirror this one as well so that it's always in the right corner. Okay, so currently you see that we do actually get a handle for these as well. Because we assigned a, a weak reference plane to these, you can actually move this by dragging this or typing in the number that you want as well. And in this case, you can see this is on the wrong side. So all we need to do here is just say switch option one or two, and it turns on the other one. So that's how easy it can be to set up a, an instance based parameter that can control those, those elements. And there you go. So what we've set up basically is the infrastructure for a project. Um, let's just bring that chair back, for example, because as you make changes to this, obviously these all update. So we can take that, that chair that's off and we can say, oh, now it's on. And you could also do a lot more with this. You could put a parametric array on the table so that the table can get bigger and understand how many chairs should go to sit at it. Um, but for now, we'll, we'll leave it here because I think you've seen the idea and understand the concept and the power of what these families can do. Because obviously as these change, a lot of things can dynamically update as well. And you can see some things like light switches. If I pull the right reference plane, these won't move. If I move the other plane that it's related to, it doesn't either. So some things will hold their relativity to where they're placed. So they can be a really helpful planning tool. Um, so that's, that's pretty much all for today. Um, so hopefully that sort of helps give you a new technique that you can use in your project. And um, if you've got any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Um, hope you enjoyed today and feel free to watch the next one. Thanks. Take care. See you next time. Bye.